nothing wrong with the fetus, but will you keep it? There is a scourge of abortion in our societies today. And we are coming full circle. We are returning to those days where human life is devalued, where the life of those who are a little bit different and not quite perfect, so to speak, is devalued, demeaned, get them out of here, we don't want to see them. Body image and worship. The gymnasiums were the temple of the, the day where people were building their bodies and it was all about body image. We know last, last year the, the word of the, of the year was selfie. Taking a photo of yourself. It, it's fun and I, I have done it, I, I confess. But it's all about our image and making our image look good to people. So we, we try selfies from different angles. Uh, it is a worship of body image. We see it in our commercials. I was sitting up the street preparing this and just looking at the ads in the shops. And each one of them is presenting perfect looking guys and girls. But it is a promotion of body image. And from that comes a subtle humanism, a subtle perversion, a subtle uh, taking away of biblical standards. We worship our models. We worship the actors with perfect bodies. There's nothing wrong about being fit, but we are to worship God and Him alone. We're not to be so concerned about our own image and what we look like. We are to be concerned about His image and His glory. We are made in his image. He is not made in our image. It is about his glory and his alone. On the positive side, despite all the bad things going on, Israel is being restored. The gospel is going out to the nations and work is going on to prepare the rebuilding of the temple. There is a ripening of good and evil in our world today. But there is a battle looming over the temple mount. As I was preparing this, and, and sharing it in, in our church uh, in December. I was struck by the stories of the suffering of, of God's people at the time, of how they, they didn't give up on their faith in, in, in light of such suffering. And at the time, I picked up a, a CD from Pastor Karen Dunham from Jerusalem, and she was sharing a word of the Lord for this year. And her word that she felt God was giving her for the church was, Are you ready for suffering? Now, I, I hoped, in a sense, selfishly, that that's them, that's the Middle East Christians, they are facing suffering. So I put it aside, and I picked up another book, and that book was on a completely different topic, but where my bookmark was, was on a chapter saying, are you ready for suffering? I shared about it in church, I challenged the church, be ready. That in the time before Christmas where the world is all jolly and happy, they're celebrating, they're having parties, getting presents. In that time, I was feeling God was giving us a warning that there are things going on. Just like on the Titanic, they were having wonderful music, even uh, music they called comic music going on as things were happening under deck and the ship was slowly starting to fill. And I was giving this warning to the church saying, there are changes going on under deck. As in, in this jolly season, let's be alert and awake. The next day, Monday the 19th of December, terrorist attack in Sydney, the Sydney siege. And we saw the ISIS banner being waved in the cafeteria of Lindt Cafe above the, the sign in the window saying, Merry Christmas. It was a wake-up call. As the world is going on, whereas merry ways, we need to be alert and be awake that our change is going on beneath the surface. I believe the persecution is coming. It doesn't mean that we all individually will face it, but we need to be prepared for what might lie ahead. We need to be prepared and say, am I willing to pay the price? There's no use coming along to church for many years and suddenly when the going gets tough to go home and say, I'm not going to do it anymore. We might as well consider now, are we ready to pay the price? It's a tough choice. It's a tough question to ask, but God is asking that question of his people today. Are you ready for challenges lying ahead? Am I ready? I want to end with a positive challenge because I know this has been a, a challenging message. But I, I believe that uh, God is looking for the restoration of the tabernacle of David. He is looking for the time when the temple will be restored. But he is also looking, ultimately, for the worship of our hearts. The temples of our, body have been, or our bodies have been dedicated to God, like the temple once was. 
Will our temples remain pure? Will our temples remain dedicated to Him, to be a place of worship for Him? Many of us have been believers for many years and we have seen others drop off, others have stopped coming to church for whatever reason. But you and I, we have continued on the walk, we have continued coming, we have believed that God is there and we are seeking Him. But are we seeking Him the same way we used to? Sometimes as we get more responsibility, our focus is on the tasks that we are doing for the kingdom, the tasks that we are doing for the Lord. But God is looking for worshippers. He's looking for people who worship Him. I was recently challenged by a a young believer in our church. Uh, He was baptized in December. uh, And uh, he's got an infectious love for the Lord. And we had a youth meeting a few weeks later, and he, um, he, he started to come with something very interesting. We had only a few minutes left, and we had finished early, so we said, let's sing one song, and we'll finish the meeting. As we sang that song, he went to the front, and he suggested another song we should sing as well. So we sang that song too. And then he suggested another song, and another song, and we went on for 20, 30 minutes. He is not a a good singer, but he wanted to worship the Lord. He was there for that purpose. I was challenged. I was in tears as I was seeing him worship the Lord. Because the challenge was, am I worshiping the Lord with that first love? Am I in church to worship the Lord, or am I in church to do my business? There is a challenge for all of us to have that first love for the Lord in our hearts. God is calling us back to that first love, to worship him, to love him. Worship is, like we said today, it's not a formality before the service begins. It's not entertainment to keep people happy. It's about serving and ministering to the Lord. We will be worshiping more later on today. And as we do, take the opportunity to praise the Lord. Take the opportunity to, in a sense, start afresh and say, Lord, I want to come back to that heart of worship. Lord, I want to worship you. I want the tabernacle of David to be in my heart, that my heart will be a place of true worship for you. That I'm not just singing the songs, I'm not just lifting my hands, but that in my heart I am seeking you. The the temple of old was built facing away from the city of Jerusalem. It's amazing as you look at look at maps of it, you see the the, the city on the, the, the south, on the west, and the temple itself, this magnificent, super expensive structure is facing away from the people. You'd say that must be a mistake, an architectural mistake. They should have known that the city was on the west, not on the east. It was no mistake. They were looking to the Lord. They were there to worship the Lord, not to worship man. And when people came to worship in the temple, they were very careful that they would not turn their back on the presence of the Lord. So as they would come and give their offering, they would carefully walk away in such a way that they would not turn their back on the presence of God. Sometimes we can be so busy helping in the church that we are turning our back on the presence of God. As the worship's going on, we are thinking about all the things we need to do, and our attention is not focused on the Lord. Our attention is focused on the people around us. What do they think? What do they need over here? Are they happy there? Is the temperature okay? These things are important, but we need to focus our attention and our worship on the Lord. So uh, we'll, we'll close close in prayer. Uh, I don't know what we'll do after this. Um, we will be having more worship later on today, and I challenge you to, to, to worship the Lord with all your heart. Uh, let, let's stand together. Let's uh, lift, lift our hands and just let the Holy Spirit move. Some of you might not be quite used to, used to this, but it is biblical that they, they lifted their hands. As we read about the temple worship, they lifted their hands to God. And as they're doing that, they're presenting themselves to God, saying, God, here I am. I am that living sacrifice. I am that offering. So let's lift up our hands to him. Sometimes we feel embarrassed about doing these things, but let's lift up our hands to him. It's only about him and you. It's about him being glorified. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift up our eyes to you. Lord, we we know, Lord, that that you are looking for worshippers. 
And Lord, we don't want to be just doing church, Lord. We want to be living for you, Lord God. We want to be worshipping you. And I do pray, Lord, that you'll restore, Lord, the tabernacle of David in our hearts. Lord, that you are looking for worshippers in this place, that wherever we have been hindered, whatever has held us back, that that is removed so we can worship you again, that your spirit will move in our lives. Lord God, you are looking for the tabernacle of David in this place. And I thank you, Lord God, we are not just here to hear about the future. We are here, Lord, to worship you, the King of kings. And the Lord of Lords, come with your spirit, fall afresh on each and every one who has come. Come in a much greater way. Lord, we need you in this place. Kurika, thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Kurika, Surika, come, Lord. Come with your spirit in our lives. Come. Come fill this temple. Come fill my life. Come fill this temple in a much greater way. Lord, you said the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the glory of the former. And Lord, we pray that that glory, Lord God, will be revealed in our lives. The glory will come, Lord, in our lives, that our hearts will be a place where you can come with your presence, where you can come with your spirit, where we are not hindering you from coming. We are not so busy doing other things. We do not have time for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But Lord, we exalt you on our hearts. We take the time to prepare the place where you can dwell in our hearts and in our midst. So come, we pray, Lord, touch our hearts. Bring us into that spirit of worship again. And I thank you for the work you have begun in our lives. Lord, you have begun to bring us into that worship. I do pray that you'll bring us much deeper. You'll bring us much further. That we'll not hesitate in worshipping you. But we will lift up our hands. We will worship you from our hearts. We will lift up our voice because you deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honour. And we praise you, Lord, for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We dedicate and commit ourselves to you afresh this day, that as we are here today, gathered in your name, I do pray you'll give us those songs of worship, that you'll put songs of victory in our heart, that you'll put songs of praise in our heart, whatever has been crushed, whatever has been defeated, whatever has felt broken in our lives, that you'll give us a song of healing, a song of restoration, a song, Lord God, that brings your promises to pass in our lives. You call us to have the song of praise in our hearts, the, the, the sword of the Spirit, and I think Thank you, Lord. You're restoring that song. Lord, for those who might have lost the song, you're restoring the song in our hearts. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you that you are here. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Amen.